So it says patients who suffer from neurological disorders, such as Alzheimer's, will feel the effects of this peptide kick in when they begin to notice improvement in their thinking abilities. Uh, it says useful in treating long-term, short-term memory, heart health, regulation of insulin, restoration of synapses between neurons, improvement of memory, et cetera, et cetera. So surely they must have a lot of clinical data and a lot of human data to back up these claims. And uh, now I've just given up on weight loss peptides as the patient Googling things and doing my research. So let's look at something that people ask me and you about all the time, mm -hmm. cognitive enhancement. And no, I don't want to work on my sleep. I don't want to eat fruits and vegetables. I don't want to put my phone away. Just give me a pill I can take that improves my cognition. So I do some research on dihexa hmm. and Dihexa, I thought this was comical. We'll put up a, a screenshot yeah. here. But it's a angiotensin IV analog. And the way this is presented makes it look like a positive thing. But I'll let you decide whether this is a positive thing or not. So says angiotensin IV has also been shown to stimulate the release of aldosterone hormone Ooh. from the adrenal gland. And to help support the kidney's sodium retention. Yeah, so it sounds like it's the opposite of spironolactone. So that must be good. Yeah, and I know that spironolactone blocks androgens, so mm -hmm. more aldosterone must mean more androgen. Yeah, it must be androgenic. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the no. case. Um, spironolactone just happens to also bind the androgen receptor and progesterone receptor. Progesterone is actually quite similar to aldosterone. Aldosterone can be synthesized um, from progesterone. But uh, if you think about something like an aldosterone receptor antagonist, like aldactone, um, then that's going to be uh, helpful in some cases of controlling blood pressure and controlling um, sodium and potassium. So this would be the opposite, which could lead to hypertension. Yeah, and I think what's particular egregious here is their, I guess, claims about the clinical improvements that can be expected from a, mm -hmm. a patient like myself, just trying to find out about the benefits of dihexa. Yeah. So it says patients who suffer from neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's will feel the effects of this peptide kick in when they begin to notice improvement in their thinking abilities. Uh, it says useful in treating long-term, short-term memory, heart health, regulation of insulin, restoration of synapses between neurons, improvement of memory, et cetera, et cetera. So surely they must have a lot of clinical data and a lot of human data to back up these claims. That is surely not the case. I, I wish that websites like this would preface all of these claims with saying, these are things that we've seen in rodent models, or even not in rodent models, in a petri dish where they have, um, like, uh, you know, cells that happen mm -hmm. to come from a brain, maybe from a human, maybe from a mouse, and then they look at uh, various effects. But yeah, um, yeah. and when they use the term patients, not that research has shown, that makes it really seem like they're extrapolating it to humans. Yeah. So. As far as dihexa goes, there are sort of derivatives of dihexa that are, you know, in preclinical research, they're still trying to get into a like neuroprotective pipeline, but there's not been anything that's conclusive there. Um, the one study that got a lot of headlines, this has been about a decade ago at this point, was dihexa when it was given to uh, mice or used in, uh, in vitro on mice neurons. Uh, was much more neurotrophic than BDNF. And people know of all these benefits from BDNF. You get it from exercise, you know, SSRIs increase BDNF, mm -hmm. helps with depression, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Helps the neurons grow together. And it was found that the dihexa was more neurotrophic. But it didn't really go beyond that. I mean, so far it's helped like confuse dementia rats get through mazes, but uh, it really hasn't progressed beyond that, you know, whether that's because there's a safety signal um, that's been seen there. They just don't think it's that promising. For whatever reason, it hasn't, it hasn't uh, progressed beyond that point. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that I would recommend anyone take. Yep. Agreed. Rats that have POTS would be the next group that I'd like to see dihexa studies in. And POTS is a postural orthostatic uh, tachycardia syndrome. So your heart rate and your blood pressure change as you sit up and stand down, sit and sit down.